Okay, we're live. <laughs> we're not live, we're recording. Thank you so much, guys, for joining our class tonight. Tonight's class is called Casting Out Demons, uh, or Casting Out a Demon. And so we're going to go through the process of how to cast a demon out, how to break their legal right, how to break them down so that we could get them out of people, okay? Because, uh, like I said, demons like to claim legal rights, right, and strongholds in order to stay inside a person. These things have to be broken in order to get the person free, okay? But first, let's start off with prayer. If uh, Reverend Stacy wants to go ahead and begin. Sure. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening giving you thanks, praise, honor, and glory once again for this training session. We ask that you would strengthen Reverend Miguel, give him the words to say, Lord, and we pray that none of these words fall on empty or deaf ears, but everyone receives according to their ability that you have for them. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, great. So we have a lot of new people here. and Welcome. Welcome to the class. I think you're going to find it very interesting because I talk about things that other ministers don't talk about. And it can make, it's the difference between getting delivered and not getting delivered. Okay. So and last week I talked about how you could get a demon. This, this week I'm going to talk about how to get free from a demon. Okay. So the first thing that you need to understand is as a minister, as a person praying for somebody else, you have to make sure that all the doors are closed from you. Okay. You have to close your own doors. You got to make sure nothing's open that you have no hidden sin. Uh, and if you do have a sin, that you confess the sin to God and ask him to forgive you. Now, this doesn't mean this doesn't mean that you ask God, God, forgive me for watching pornography today. And then tomorrow you go back to doing the same thing, okay? So once you ask God to forgive you for your sin, you have to close that door permanently. So you don't open yourself up to um, demonization, okay? Because when you're praying for somebody, you could pick up a, a demon of the, the person you're praying for because you have open doors. So the demon can jump from the person into you because simply because you have that, that door that's open. So the, every door as a minister must be closed. You can be, you got to live as holy as you can. You have to live a holy life and you got to make sure that the doors are closed so that the demons cannot jump inside of you, Okay. So demons cannot jump inside of you unless they have a legal right. So obviously, if you're sinning, there's there's a possibility you could go ahead and, and pick these things up. Okay, so keep, keep demons will, will try everything to stay inside a person. If you pray for deliverance, if, when you do deliverance ministry, you will have demons that simply leave. But the, there's a strong man, the strong demons, those demons will fight and they will do whatever it takes to stay inside a person. So it is important that you follow these steps that I'm going to give you today so you can break them down so you can get them out because he'll, he'll come up with all kinds of, of crazy things just in order to stay inside a person. So they will say, oh, he sold his soul to the devil, something like that. He sold his soul to the devil. So what do we do before when the person told us that they had sold their soul to the devil, right? We broke the contract. We, you know, we pleaded the blood of Jesus over the, over the, the person on the contract. Right. We brought the person back to Jesus Christ and that so they lost their legal right to the person. OK, that's how we did it. Uh, so the devil will claim all kinds of, of things. So the devil will claim legal rights where no legal rights exist. So the devil will say, you know, he he was watching pornography. I have legal right to him. But the person has confessed. That's how you break the legal right. The person confessed the sin to God, asked God to forgive them. So the devil lost his legal right. So the devil can no longer gain legal right against a person because um, it has been confessed. So once the, the you know the, the sin has been forgiven, the devil cannot bring up that up against a person. If he does bring it up against a person, then we simply say the person has confessed the sin to the Lord Jesus Christ and he's <clears throat> faithful to forgive the person and the person will be delivered. Okay. Any questions in regards to that? Okay, so the next thing we do, the first thing we do, actually, is that uh, we do what we call the initial prayer. The initial prayer is a prayer that uh, it's pretty much a summary of the of the checklist that we give people. And it's very detailed and it's very it's general, but detailed. The, the fact that it has keywords in there and it has keywords of submission, protection, renunciation and invocation of the Lord. Okay. So you're basically renouncing Satan, 
you know, you're asking God to forgive you for your sins. You're forgiving everyone else. And you're asking God to deliver you from Satan. Okay. So the initial prayer is a quick summary of everything that we're going to do in the checklist. It is followed by the, what we call the scripture of protection for both minister and the person receiving ministry. So the scripture of protection that we use is uh, Isaiah 54. There's no weapon formed against us will prosper. And then Luke 10, 19, that says, Behold, I give you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means will hurt us. Okay, so that's the scriptures we use. And why do we tell, why do we tell him those scriptures? Why do we do that? Because the devil needs to know we are in charge. That's what we're telling them. We're in charge. You're not in charge here. Okay. You're going to do what we tell you to do. Right. And why are we going to tell you? Why are you going to follow what we tell you to do? Because, you know, um, we, because the scripture tells us, Luke 10, 19 tells us that we have power over them. Okay. And that they can't hurt us. They can't do anything to us. So we're making it clear. You can't really do anything to us. So then the next thing we do after that is we prevent we prevent uh, we place the blood between us and the person that's receiving ministry so how do we place the blood so we grab the bible and this is you could do it anyway you could just say it but this is the way i do it okay so we just place the blood we place the blood between uh between you and i of jesus right for protection and then we you know we tell the demon uh, you know, you cannot cross the bloodline. Like if they get aggressive, you say you cannot cross the bloodline. So, for example, if the demon's coming, if the person, the, the demonized person is coming towards you, you remind the demonized person, the blood of Jesus is between you and I. You cannot touch me. All right. And this will prevent uh, physical attacks and transfers. Transfers will be when the demons jump out from the person who's demonized into you. So by doing that, you, you protect yourself. So what we're doing is initially, initially you're protecting yourself from the enemy. You're stating the rules here of war. You can't cross the bloodline. I have authority over you. You must obey me. And you can't touch me. All right? And anything you do against me, it's not going to work. That's what we're telling. We, we're establishing what we call the rules of war, which is very unfair for the demon because they really have no power over us. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, like I said, scriptures read, standing authority and power over the uh, forces of evil. This is to make it plain. We know our authority and we are here to use it against you. All right. So, the devil would use, would, would um, attack you as long as you allow him to. So, once you stand up to him and you tell him, you're not going to tolerate that, I know who I am in Christ the devil loses all power, okay? That doesn't mean that he's going to be like, okay, no, he's, he's going to fight, all right? But we're going to break that. We're going to break him down to the point that he's going to want to leave. Like today, the demon said, I want to go, <laughs> right? He, he said that, we're say, I want to go. And I, no, you're not here until we tell you to go, all right? You're, you're going to stay there until we tell you to go, all right? He said it like two or three different times. He couldn't wait to get out of there, but with there was information we need to find out, so... We say we can't, you can't go until we tell you to go. Okay. Uh, so what are the two conditions for deliverance? The most common conditions for deliverance. There's two uh, common conditions for deliverance. What are they? All right. Number one is the confession of sins. You have to confess your sins. And this is good. So as a deliverance minister, when somebody's confessing their sins, you need to write down what their sins are. Because when you write down what their sins are, it kind of gives you a clue of what demon you're dealing with. So I'll give you an example. For example, if you have witchcraft, manipulation, if you have sexual stuff in there, um, you know, that's usually the spirit of Jezebel. Okay. Right. If you have something that's, um, you know, a demon that's very prideful, uh, that, you know, very stubborn, it could be Lucifer or it could be Leviathan. Just to give you an example, okay, what you're dealing with. So you need to look, if the person tells you they're very stubborn, things like that, you, obviously you need to look at other things to determine that because you need to have discernment. So you look at the clues that, the, you know, the Lord is revealing to you as you ask questions, as you, as you um, interview the person, you could figure out what's happening with them. And then you, you need to figure out by writing down the sins, you know, more or less what demon you're dealing with. Okay. 
So the second condition is uh, forgiveness of others. And I did a video on YouTube today in regards to forgiveness of others. Um, unforgiveness leads to torment. All right. So we, you need to tell the person that's unwilling to forgive that, the you know, unfortunately, you know, because unless you're willing to forgive, God is not going to forgive your sins. It's a condition, right? It's a condition of forgiveness of sins. As a matter of fact, the Lord will turn you over to the tormentors if you don't forgive others, okay? Because God has forgiven you from all your sins. So the least you, you could do is forgive other people for what they've done. So I know pe some people have done terrible things to you, right? That doesn't mean when you forgive somebody, doesn't mean that you have to be buddy buddies with them, all right? What you do is you turn it over to the Lord. You know that they're in injustice to you. You turn them over to the Lord and let the Lord deal with them. All right. So. Demons are made aware that God forgives and that their sins cannot be used against them. So you need to make sure that you remind them that the sins of the person, those sins that have been confessed cannot be used against them. And you quote scripture, Romans 8, 1, Romans 8, 1. OK. So once we do that, so we went from we went from um, establishing the ground rules. We go into what we call breaking soul ties and bonds. OK, so how do we do this? So if you see my checklist, we talked about sending any piece inside of me. I send them back to the person from which they came from. And any piece that the person has, I ask the Holy, uh, the, Holy uh, the, um, the Holy Spirit oh. and the angels of the Lord to bring them back to me and make me whole again. OK, so that's what we ask. So uh, what we're basically doing is breaking soul ties and bonds. And we do that by saying we break the soul tie, we break the soul bond with this person, right? Whatever person or with any person that you may have. Because soul bonds and soul ties could be it could be sexual. It could be emotional. OK, it could be you could have a tight relationship with someone and you could uh, develop an emotion, uh, an emotional uh, soul tie or soul bond with the person. And guess what? You could catch the demons. If they have demons, some of the demons could jump into you, okay, because you're tied. So uh, these things have to be broken, and the pieces need to be sent back so you could be made whole again. You have no more, um, they have no more influence over you, all right? The next thing we do is we deal with attachments. Uh, the attachments are burned with the fire of the Holy Ghost, right? You go also separate the attachment with the sword of spirit, right? You separate you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ with the sword of spirit. Any, any attachments to you, we separate you with the Soul of Spirit, okay? All right. At this point, after we do that, at this point, what we do is um, we bind the straw man. Why? Because Matthew 18, 18 gives us the authority to bind and loose, all right? And Ecclesiastes 4.12 gives us the rope to bind. So Ecclesiastes 4.12. And because Jesus stated that we cannot spoil a straw man's house, Unless we bind the, the strong man first, okay? And that's found in Matthew 3, 27 and 29. So the first thing that Jesus tells us is that we have to do what? Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. Right? We bind the strong man. So that's the first thing he tells us. We cannot spoil the strong man's house unless we fair, first bind the strong man. So we say, according to Matthew 18, 18, whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. According to Ecclesiastes 4.12, with a 3-4 cord, I bind the strong man inside of you. And we do this round motion. We bind the strong man right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bind you, Satan, is what we say. All right? We make it clear. Now, I want to make a note. Luke 11.21 tells us that demons wear armor. All right? This is in Luke 11.21. Demons wear armor. Okay? What does that mean? That means that we have the armor of God. Guess what? Demons have armor too. And sometimes the reason why they are hard to torment and torture, you know, you could use the, the word of God to, to cut them, right? You could use the cross, right? And sometimes these things are in effect and not strong enough because they're wearing armor. And so we physically remove the armor off the demons. So we remove the armor physically, right? We do this motion like we're actually ripping it off of them. So we remove their crown. They have crowns. They have staff of powers. They have weapons. They have tools. Okay. They have baggage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They have breastplate. They, ha they have all kinds of, uh, of, uh, of stuff they use. Okay. And so 
Now that the strong man is bound and we pretty much stripped him naked, all right, we begin to spoil his house, okay? We call it his house, but the reality is not his house, all right? All right, so what are, what are some of the things that we do? We do what we call renunciation. And renunciation is um, renounce, it's renouncing certain things, okay? Some of these things you may have done yourself. Other things your parents or your grandparents or your ancestors did And because they did it, a curse fell upon the bloodline and it's affecting you. So a lot of people walking around with curses in the bloodline, they don't even know they have it, right? They never sat down and looked at their life and think things are normal and they're not normal. So why are these things happening to me? You have to ask yourself, well, my, my, um, I'll give you an example. Poverty is very common. Generational curse that's passed down from one generation to another. Why am I poor, right? Why am I poor? My grandfather was poor. My father's poor. Why am I poor? Is it because I, you know, I grew up in a bad area? Ah, oh, it's possible. But a lot of times, so a, lot, a lot of times there's somebody that always break through. Why? Because it skips generations. Sometimes it skips generations. It does, the person doesn't get affected in families. So you see people that are suffer from poverty and you see somebody that just, I don't know where it's super rich, got all the money in the world in the same family, right? But everybody else is poor. So what happened? Did that person break the curse? Maybe, but sometimes these curses break, uh, they, they skip generations. So it's a possibility that the person just skipped the, you know, skipped the curse. So uh, we see that with families. So renunciation has to be done. Oh. But, uh. What happened? Oh. All right, uh. who was that? I think it's Stephanie. Oh. All right. I'm good. Okay. okay. So, so what happens is some of the stuff is generational. Some of the stuff is, is, is because of you. And a lot of times you don't even remember that you did some of these things. Okay. So, so what are some of these things that you may have done? Well, how about divination? Divination. People go to fortune telling, right? Fortune tellers. You know, they have their cards read. Uh, sometimes people we see the next thing we, we see most common is witchcraft. People do witchcraft. I did a love spell when I was a when I was a teenager uh, because I, you know, I was trying to get a boy or a girl to like me. So I went ahead and did this uh, spell. And so guess what? You did witchcraft, okay? Whether okay. And so you you could say I did that a long time ago, all right? But guess what? You opened the door a long time ago, all right? And they won't go. They won't go. They have to be told to leave. They will not go on them uh, by themselves. They will not go. All right. So they have to be told to, to leave. Then you have sorcery. Sorcery is very common. Uh, people do the, you know, people um, that um, that do sorcery, sometimes they don't even know they're doing it, all right? It's just these things are common things that people do, and they don't even think twice about it, okay? So if you dealt in the occult, you need to ask God to forgive you, and your ancestors. So this is on the checklist because even though you may have not done these things, one of your ancestors more, more than likely did it. All right. So we ask God to forgive them and you. All right. You're the sense of the ancestors. You got to ask God to forgive them. Uh, this will break generational curses. Generational curses must be broken. So you ask God to forgive the sense of your ancestors and your sins. So that the uh, generational curses could be broken. All right. The next common thing is what we call idolatry. And that's a lot of people have belonged. Family members have belonged to false religions in the past. Some people are Hindu. Now they're Christians. All right. So some people are Mormons and now they're Christians. All right. So your ancestors could have been, uh, you know, witch doctors. They may have worship devils uh, more than likely. And I'm pretty sure all of us have an ancestor that worships some devil, okay? So these things, this is why these things have to be broken. So the sins of the ancestors must be forgiven. Ask God to forgive your ancestors and your own sins. You must renounce all false religions that your parents and yourself uh, were part of. Uh, it's, it's idolatry. That's one of the most common things. Idolatry could also be the love of money, all right? Football games, people who are sports maniac. You know, uh, those people, uh, that's a form of idolatry. All right. They don't go to church. Go. The game is on Sunday. I got to watch the game. Right. Yeah, you know, the Nationals are playing. 
I don't know. Somebody else. <laughs> All right. So they're, they're, this is a form of idolatry. They, they can't miss the game, right? But they can miss church. They could do, they, you know, they don't want to pray. They don't want to read the word of God. So when something becomes uh, higher than God is, is what we call idolatry. All right. So the next thing that you need to be renounced is false, false gods and goddesses. All right. This is just because I'm pretty sure your ancestors worship some gods or goddesses. All right. And so you're renouncing it. All these things are renounced in the name of Jesus Christ. Then you break, you do what we call curse breaking. You break spells, hexes, vexes, and of course, curses. All right. By the way, demons place these things upon each other. And the, the reason why they do this is to keep themselves inside of a person. So there's no loyalty between demons, right? They just follow orders. They hate each other. And what they want to do is that they want to, you know, they get the order from Satan, directly from Satan. The orders passed down. And the the um, the uh, order of the demon above the, the one that's receiving the order, that, that demon makes sure that the orders are being enforced, that they're being enforced. And if the orders are not being enforced, they are in charge of punishing the demons under them. So it's a, it's a, They work by intimidation. That's how they work. They work by intimidation. It's a kingdom of intimidation and fear. So this is why sometimes when we're praying for people, we get pretty aggressive, all right? We, we get pretty aggressive and we say, you're going to do what we tell you to do, right? And they, they say, yes, yes, because they work by intimidation. So they need to know that you know your authority and they have to listen, right? I told the demon something today in regards to To, you know, I'm, I'm, um, I have authority over you and you're going to do exactly what I told you. I told them something like, you're going to be nice to this person. Obviously, demons cannot be nice because their nature, their own nature is to be evil. And but the demon hated it. <laughs> anyway, okay. so the demon hated. So sometimes we do we say certain things just to irritate them, to break them down. Right. And so, um, you know, it's just you have to be adaptable, whatever situation you're dealing with. Like change their names. Yeah, like change their names. Do we do that? <laughs> yeah, we change their names um, because uh, that irritates them. Uh, they hate it, and we like doing it, right? So you know, we say, "Oh, you don't want to you you don't want to listen to us." Okay, since you won't follow directions, we're gonna change your name. Your name is now stupid. You're <laughs> stupid, right? Because you can't you can't follow simple directions, and they get really mad. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but we call them Goofy. We're gonna name you Goofy, right? That's your new name. Dumb and stupid is your new name, right? So we tell we we do this in order to intimidate the demons, in order to get them to to break their power. Okay, so so dedications made to a demon of a family's generational blood bloodline must be renounced. This is done to break any legal right given to the demon by the ancestors. So I'll give you an example. This is done in Freemasonry. Right. It's also done in a lot of families where, you know, they, they do usually do it for money. Uh, and what they do is they consecrate the bloodline. They give the bloodline to a devil. Right. In, in exchange for money. And so they could say, you know, something like, oh, okay, so this is what I'm going to do in exchange for this. So they usually do a blood sacrifice with that. Right? And it's usually a family member. And so they sacrifice their own family in exchange for money. And this is very common, by the way. We see this all the time in ministry. So there's there's three things mainly that demons want, uh, the people want, and they and they uh, sell their family for. It's money, power, and what's the other one? Sex. Sex. Those are the three things that we find out that most people sell their whole bloodline for: money, power, and sex. There's been times that we've seen people like, for example, uh, sell their, their family bloodline because they want to they want to win a war, like a tribal war. I've seen that. Those are very rare, but it's mostly money related. That's the number one reason. This is, there's a reason why Jesus says, you know, you have to make a choice, right? Mammon, right? Or God, you have to make a choice. You have to make you have to turn away. From, from obviously from those things because the love of money is not bad in, in itself. It's the love of money, okay? The greed that comes with it. And when you start sacrificing family members, right, to a demon in exchange for for money, guess what happens to that, uh, that bloodline? You may get all the money in the world, but guess what happened to the rest of your family? 
what happens? They're poor. They'll never have any money. And th we see this in bloodlines, where there's families that don't have any money at all. They've been cursed. And a lot of times they protect this mammon, demon, because it's one of the most powerful things. People are, are very, they don't like letting money go. All right? <laughs> People don't like letting money go, okay? And that's like, like you know, take everything, but don't take my money. Right? And that's how people are. That's that's why Jesus compared it, right? Mammon and God, because that's the hardest thing for people to let go. They'll let go of anything else. They'll sell everything, but don't take their money away. All right? So So what's the three what's the three again? It's power. Power, okay. Uh huh. Money. Money uh -huh. and sex. Okay. Those are the three things. All right, those are the three things people sell <clears throat> pretty much their soul for. All right. So the next thing we talked about is oaths that people have taken. Jesus says, do, do not swear, right? He says, do not make any oaths, right? People make oaths all the time. They make it, you know, in the, especially Freemason. Freemason oaths, you know, they take a death curse. If they say anything, you know, they, they you know, they bring death, uh, death upon themselves. Um you know, a lot of times they die young, you know, and their family members die young, the whole mm. family. We have people, we have seen families where, you know, a whole bunch of brothers and sisters all dead young, right? And there's only one survivor that's going through deliverance. And, you know, that person breaks free and everything's fine. But the rest of the family already suffered because a family member took death hopes upon themselves mm. and their bloodlines, okay? So Freemason is very demonic, uh, we see people with uh, with a lot, a lot of satanic ritual abuse in Freemason, all right. And so, um, you know, if you know if you have Freemason in your family, please get deliverance. Uh, it's not nothing to play around with. It's the very serious curses, okay. Um, also, read the uh, yeah, fr fraternities and sororities are the same thing. So, yes. just so you know, college fraternities and sororities are the same curses that come with Freemason. That's right. Yeah, people don't understand that because I had a, a person on my Facebook page comment in regards to fraternity and sororities, and I had to explain to them that they're rooted in Freemasonry. So, yeah. So the next thing we do is break all generational curses. Um, so this is the second time I state this because it's important. So how do you break generational curses? All right. How do you do that? Anybody wants to say? Anybody wants to say how we break the generational curses? Reverend Stacy? Sure. We ask the demon, <clears throat> we command the demon <laughs> uh, to tell us how long they've been in the person's bloodline. And they'll say five generations or seven generations. You always test that because more than likely they're lying the first time. And then they'll tell you the truth. Okay, 10 generations. So you say, what happened 10 generations ago? And they'll explain their great ancestor uh, a sacrifice for money, power, and sex. So you bring the person back and you have them renounce the curse of 10 generations ago on my mother. You ask the mother or father's side, they say the mother's side, you break that curse. And then after that curse is broken, you bring the demon back forward and they no longer have a legal right. That curse has been broken off of their blood. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. So we break it. So like also when we do a specific curse breaking, it's a way we break curses. Uh, obviously, some of the stuff is generational. So, you know, we go down the list and we say we break pornography in Jesus' name. We break. So you have to make sure that you break every single curse that you may think is inside a person in the name of Jesus. So you just say, I break this curse in the name of Jesus. I break this curse in the name of Jesus. Remember, every curse is enforced by who? Who enforces the curses? Demons. That's right. The demons enforce the curses, okay? So once you break the curse, all you have to do is command the demons to leave because they have no, lo no longer uh, legal right to be there, and it's over for them. They have to leave, okay? They have to leave. But if you were to ca command the demon to leave, and they have a curse, and they have legal right to be there, you the demon will leave, but they'll come back. They'll come back, okay? And they may be quiet for, you know, six months or so, hiding, you know, waiting for the right time. And when we're gone, when the minister's gone and disappear and you can't find them anymore, guess what? I'm back. <laughs> All right. 
and they show up and you're like, what's going on here? All right. And so you you think that, you know, that they, they came back, but they've always been there. They're hiding. All right. Because legal rights must be broken. All right. Strongholds must be broken. Strongholds are false beliefs that you have developed. Okay. And your mind is your biggest enemy. Your mind, the ability to think, right, and, and rationalize things that are not true are your biggest enemy. All right. So what? how do we break those? We break those with the word of God. So the word of God is truth, right? Right. And the truth will set you free. Right. So you need to read the word of God. And so, for example, if you have strongholds that uh, false beliefs and somebody tells you this is wrong. You should you should probably look into it, be a Berean and, 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 and uh, look it over. OK, look over the book, see what the pastor is telling you or the minister is telling you. What false belief do you have? And then what you need to do is um, read what the pastor is telling you and then ask the Holy Spirit to give you a revelation of what you're reading so that you could you could get the truth. OK, and so you need to read it out loud. Don't simply uh, read it silently. You need to read it out loud, all right, so that faith comes to hearing, hearing the word of God. You need to read the word of God out loud. Do not read it to yourself. You need to read it out loud, okay? So you could break those false beliefs that people are telling you. This You might not know it's a false belief, you know? And unless somebody points it out, you're not going to see it. That's why we have pastors, okay? Pastors that teach the word of God. So that you, you can see these things and not be fooled by the devil because the devil will fool you. All right. And so we you know we have people all the time. What's the what's the biggest complaint we see with people, Reverend Stacy, in regards to the Holy Spirit? That Christians can't have a demon. Well, that one. But, well, how about the um I blaspheme? Oh yeah, I blaspheme the Holy Ghost <laughs> and I'm never getting to heaven and and they just, it's hard to, religious spirits, those are the hard, false religious spirits are the hardest ones to deal with because yeah. people are ingrained. It's ingrained in their mind. Yeah, so a lot of people believe they have blasphemed the Holy Spirit and because they, they believe that, they think there's no hope for them. And guess what? The devil has them. It's like being in chains, okay? Mm -hmm. So that needs to be broken. You need to tell them that what the scriptures say. So they could be free, okay? So the next thing we talk about is the forgiving of ancestors for making blood offerings because the ancestors, some of your ancestors did blood offering, offerings. It's a possibility you did it, that you have committed blood offerings. Some people have, you know, um, sacrificed to Satan. They cut chicken's head off or they, the goats or something, right? Because they, they were unaware that this was actually witchcraft, all right? So don't, you need to ask God to forgive you for those things. Mm -hmm. Um, you also need to break the curses that came upon you for offering blood right to false gods and goddesses these blood curses are the hardest ones to break right because you're feeding the demon the demon wants the blood so they could feed on it okay so people who have negativity in their life they're negative because they're feeling that uh, they're feeding that demon People have compulsive masturbation, things like that. That's feeding the demon. Okay, that's why you do that. Okay, people that cut themselves, they're, they're feeding the demon by doing that. So when you have continuous obsessive type of behavior, it's because you're feeding some type of demon. All right. So you need to identify that and deal with it. All right. So um, these blood curses are the toughest ones to break because. You're offering blood. You're making a sacrifice, okay? This is the time where we, we tell Satan, we did it with the initial prayer, but we do it again in the checklist, which is we renounce Satan. So we, we renounce Satan. This is also done in the initial prayer. By the way, after the initial prayer, we do the uh, witchcraft protection prayer, which is to break witchcraft because witchcraft is so common nowadays. You know, how many people here burn sage? Anybody here burn sage? It's a true question. <laughs> if, for, sage is witchcraft. Don't do it, okay? All right? So don't burn sage. Um, Satan is told to leave. We tell Satan to leave. We resist Satan because the Bible tells us resist the devil and he will flee. 
So we resist you, Satan. It's in the checklist. And then we say, we tell him we have to leave. All right. His dominion over you is declared over. So you tell him, you have no power over me. Right. I have power over you. This is where you break blood covenants. Blood covenants are renounced. Any blood covenant you have made and your ancestors. So blood covenants are renounced. Generational ones as well. Uh, they're, the they're declared no and void in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. So why? Because Satan is a legal, legalist. All right. So he'll hold on to anything he can. Uh, strongholds must be broken with the word of God. Uh, and the Holy Spirit is asked to heal any parts that, that, that need healing. Why? Because if you have, if you have uh, any pain, any stuff, any type of pain, um, you know, you need to get that healed because demons hide behind pain. So the pain needs to be resolved. So we do inner healing in our ministry. Very powerful inner healing. Sometimes it's quickly. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. I think lately it's been pretty fast with me uh, mm -hmm. with inner healing. I just send them to Jesus and then cut the demons off. Demons stay for judgment, right? So inner healing is, is a specialty of deliverance. Not everybody knows how to do it. We know how to do deliverance very well. Not deliverance, I'm sorry. Uh, well, with deliverance too, but inner healing. <laughs> inner healing and deliverance, okay? They're two different things, but they're part of each other, all right? So we do that as well here in this ministry. Um, Holy Spirit needs to heal the person from the pain. Right? Only he could do it, okay? Because Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, right? So, and Jesus also came to uh, to do what? Set the captives free. Right. And to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Right. All right. So, so after we do all that, what we do is we list the sins. Uh, so the list of sins is used to break specific curses based on the person's personal sin. So if the person has personal sins, is we just break them. We break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Pornography, we break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Masturbation, we're breaking in the name of Jesus Christ. And we constantly, we go over every sin. We write it down and we broke, break every sin related to, um, every curse related to that particular sin. Okay? And after we do that, that's when the confrontation starts. So the, when the confrontation starts, when the confrontation starts, I do something. My mentor does what we call a stare. Stare, so he looks at the devil. And all he does is, it's look at him and he manifests. I do something a little bit different. And that is, I tell, I tell the devil what happened. <laughs> I tell him, this is how you got in. This is how you got in. This is the door you used. And, um, you know, uh, you took advantage of this person this way. Right. And that's how you got in. And, you know, they, they usually can't hold it. They manifest. All right. They manifest just by talking to them. So, you know, you know, you got in because this person did that. And, you know, the parents did this and this is how you got in and this is how you did it. And so I go through the whole story and I tell the devil exactly what he did. And by, by that time, they can't hold it. They manifest because I told them the truth. And then I tell them, I told you the truth, didn't I? And they tell you, yes. All right. So that doesn't always work. But, you know, the majority of the time it does. All right. And so you need to c come up with your own technique of how to get these things to manifest. And usually... You could just grab your cross and say, get up and face me, Satan. So you grab your cross and you say, get up and face me. And the devil will manifest. All right. They will manifest. Sometimes it's angry. Sometimes it's just, you know, you can see a change in the person's face. Right. But they will manifest. Now, keep in mind that I told you guys that sometimes with the manifestations, you could have a person, you could have a witch. Right. You could have an altar. You could have an ancestor. You could have a demon. So you, you can have all these things manifesting and you might, you might start commanding a demon to leave and they could just go, you know, looking around, not paying attention to you. That's probably not a demon. Okay. That's probably a person or an ancestor or an altar. So they need to be dealt with um, differently than you would deal with uh, a person. So as you take this class, uh, as a, a, a demon, I'm sorry, as you take these classes, I would tell you, I would teach you how to, deal with outer personality dissociation and witches all right so um once we do that once you're able to uh, figure that out you're going to be able to you're going to be able to get the person free so 
What do you need in order to discern whether you're dealing with a witch, a person, an altar, a dissociated part, or a demon? What do you need? What do you need? You need to try the spirit. That's right. You need discernment and you need to try the spirit. You need to ask the per you know, the whatever's talking to you. Are you a person or a demon? Are you a person of a de or a demon? They tell you I'm a person. Then you, how do you test them? You ask them if Jesus came in the flesh. That's right. You ask them if demons uh, if Jesus, Jesus came in the flesh. <laughs> okay. You ask them that. You ask them that, and if they tell you Jesus came in the flesh, what is it then? It's a person, right? Mm -hmm. But if they tell you they're a person, you say, fire the Holy Ghost, fire the Holy Ghost, right? And they start ah, ah, screaming and stuff. <laughs> it's more, more than likely it's a demon, okay? All right? So you have to use the discernment on how to deal with these things, all right? So do you guys have any questions? I got one. I got one. Who's that? Um, Angela. Angela. Okay, let's see. So you said, okay, so I'm a little confused about the person. So are you saying like the person is an actual like witch or like it's an ancestor or like, so I guess I'm kind of confused on the person because I'm like, well, can anyone can do it? Like, you know, so that's what my question is. I'll, re I'll let Reverend Stacy answer this because he loves this part of ministry. Okay. <laughs> So okay. It could be one of any of the three. It could be a person and the person being a witch. So a witch has entered that person's soul with a demon. Every one of the parts, if it's a demon, I mean, if it's a, a witch, that's a person or an ancestral dissociated part or an altar, they all have demons behind them. So you have to peel the layers back and the discernment will tell you. You'll ask the person how long, they, you know, you'll ask them questions. How long they've been inside you know what are they doing in there and if it's a witch you can threaten them by cutting their silver cord you tell them stop playing games if you're a witch you need to tell me i'm going to cut your silver cord because their silver cord is what attaches them to the demon that gives them a, a a will a way into the person so then they'll manifest real fast and they say okay 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 i'll tell you if they're a disassociated part then more than likely they're in torment or trauma from their era. When it was a hundred years ago, if it was slavery or if it was the Mayans, the person was being sacrificed, they're usually terrified. So you cut the demon off of that person with the sword of the spirit, according to Hebrews 4.12, and then that part can talk freely. And then you send them to Jesus. You have the person close their eyes and you ask them if they know Jesus. If this dissociated part knows Jesus, then you close their eyes and they go to Jesus and you can see the person breathe and leave. If it's a, if it's a witch, then you have them uh, repent for what they've done to the person and ask for God's forgiveness. And then you send them on to Jesus as well and Jesus will deal with them as well. And if they fail to do that, then you simply bind the witch with the threefold cord to the demon that they came in on and you cast them out. When the demon goes, they go. Does that make sense? Angela? Yes, yes, that does make sense. Okay. So so what I did today is go over the checklist. Everything that I talked about is in the checklist, okay? Because that's the checklist we use to to you know to break all these legal rights, renounce all these things. Um, we use this checklist, which is very effective. And Pastor Jim used it recently and, and he found it to be very, very effective in, in, in ministry. Uh, and I believe all, some other people have used it here as well. Anybody else use this checklist? Stephanie, you use it? Okay. And Renee, you used it. How was it effective for you? Yes. Okay, oh, yeah. good. Good. I've used it several times. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So everything I talked about, everything I talked about today is in that checklist. And the reasoning behind all these things, you know, the reason why these things were added to the checklist is because all these things are so common in everybody's bloodline. In everybody's bloodline, they have these things in their in their in their bloodline. So it's kind of general, right? And we could use it against the devil because the devil will say, Oh, I you know, his parents gave him to me. All right. But he, he's an adult. He's an adult. He broke the curse already, right? He broke the curse already. You have no legal right to him. So keep in mind that if your parents did something, 
right, without your consent, that you could claim that against the devil. Say, I never consented to that. I never consented to that. He may have sold my bloodline to the devil, but I never consented to that. And I renounce that. Very simple. Very simple. And when once you do that, the devil loses all power, right? Because he, he claims things, like I said in the beginning, he claims things that rights that don't exist. <laughs> They're just not true. So, you know, oh, yeah, you know, he committed blood sacrifice. He renounced that already in the checklist. That has been renounced. You cannot use that. Well, he did 40 chickens. I don't care how many chickens. I don't care if he did 100 chickens. <laughs> okay? I don't care. Well, you know, that, that, that isn't this how it goes? Yeah, yeah, how it goes. He did 40 yes, chickens. Who cares? I don't care if he did 100 chickens, like I said. So, he, you know, you say 100 chickens, he'll be like 200. Yeah. So the whole point, the whole point is for you to to hammer the devil to the point that he understands you have no legal right here. You got to go. Right. So once he says he's got no legal right. It's over. All right. Once the strong man says he's got no legal right. He's got to go. So how do you do that? Okay. so you 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 have him renounce any any um, any right to the person. You have him renounce any right to the person. You have them lift the curse from the person, whatever the curse is, the initial curse. You have them lift that curse off the person. And then you have the, you know, you torment, you actually have them tormented. You, 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 what we call judgment. So we said, receive the judgment of God 10 times greater for everything you did to this person and their ancestors. Right. And after you do that, you have them release the destiny of the person. So release the person's destiny. Right. And the person's destiny could be, you could also, you know, if the person has poverty, you command them to release anything, any money that has been held in satanic banks, right? So you do it that way. And so, to, so that the person could get back everything that has been stolen. You know, the Bible says a thief that, that gets caught stealing has to uh, return back, I believe, seven times or something like that. Seven times back what they've stolen, right? So you claim that scripture. So that the, the devil has to return everything he's taken away from the person. So now you don't let the devil leave until he actually says he's returning it. Okay. So once they do that, uh, what we do is we uh, have the devil renounce his own doom. So I'll give you an example of what we say. So we say, um, I, Satan, ren uh, you know, um, uh, I, Satan, bind myself to all of my kingdom and kindness one. Together we renounce every right to this man or woman of God, right? For what we have done, we lift the curse off this person. For what we have done to this man or woman of God, we receive the judgment of God 10 times greater, right? And then this is when you're saying judgment. The judge received the judgment of God, right? And then we say we release this, uh, this person's destiny. And then you have the demon uh, release the destiny or whatever he's taking. And then we say, we all go now to the pit so once he says that he's going to the pit guess what god's going to enforce it all right and then i'm going to the pit all right any any other questions i know it's a lot of information i keep talking about this thing over and over again because i want you guys to understand why we do what we do uh, that it's just not just words empty words every word has a meaning in the checklist the reason why we do certain things it's it's hard it's like an let's suppose it's an adaptable program so just to say it that way okay so you have to be adaptable you have to be able to change depending on what's going on so it's not in a straight line it's here and there and everywhere right because you're you're it's a war it's a war right. mm -hmm. Okay, and so you have to be adaptable. You know, the, the enemy is going up the terrain. You have to go on the side and flank them or something. Yeah, it's just to give you an example. It's a war. So I'm giving you the basics so you can understand why we do certain things and why we claim the word of God against the enemy. Okay, we will claim these things. He's broken. He's broken these things. He has renounced these things. You have no legal right and you have to go. I have legal right. You have legal right. He just renounced it. You have no legal right. You have to go. Yeah, I have no legal right. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Okay. Very plain. Do you have no legal right? You got to go. There's nothing. You, there's, sometimes we even ask, do you have anything that you could hold on to stay? 
and they tell you no. All right, and they have to leave. All right, any questions? So if not, yeah, go I ahead. I got another question. Yeah, go ahead. Pastor. Um, okay, so at the end of everything, you know, once you cast the demons out of, um, you know, of people, like what are some of the things that you know that they're actually like came out as far as like, like does a person throw up? Like, you know, um, <laughs> are they <laughs> screeching? Are they yelling? Like what's going on? Yeah. It depends. Yeah. It depends. Everybody's different. So sometimes some, they Yeah, go ahead. You said sometimes you won't even see anything. That's right. You said that. Okay. Wow. That's right. So sometimes you won't see anything. The demons will leave. How do you know if the demon totally left or not? We, so always, if, we always challenge and make sure. Right. And we are. Uh, call the person forward again and, and if there's any demons remaining in there we ask the Holy Spirit to push them forward any remaining demons come forth now in Jesus name right. and you command any remaining demons to come forth and they have to manifest right and what do we tell the people like when we after ministry we say give us a follow up and how long mm -hmm. yeah about a week or two yeah, about a week or two right because they continue to come out that's right because after a week or two you should be able to see some changes mm -hmm. you will have changes in your life so this is what we tell people. It's a life-changing experience because it really is, all right? We've seen people, I see, I saw, this is not advertisement or anything. You're not going to receive a gold pot or gold or anything like that. <laughs> but, you know, we, 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 I've seen people that we pray for and the next day it's like, oh, thank you so much. You know, I received this check that I was waiting for, <laughs> for, for, you know, a huge amount of money and, and stuff like that because the devil releases these things. He's forced to. All right. I've got three job offers. I don't know which one to take. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So they're so, manifest again how? In all types of ways? Yes, there could be no manifestation at all. So the best way to know if a demon has left for sure is check in a week or two, see if things are changing in your life. Right? So after your ministry, you wait one or two weeks and you see have, have the torment stopped. You know, um, am I getting job offerings? Uh, are, are the hindrances going away? That type of thing. That's how you know the devil left. But sometimes, Stephanie, okay. to answer your question, they come out through burping, yawning. Sometimes okay. people throw up. Sometimes they have to go to the bathroom. They have to go to the bathroom right away, sweating, all different <laughs> kinds of ways. You know, their wow. hands start itching. Wow. Trembling. They start shaking and the demon yeah, they start, mm -hmm. yeah, that's wow. what I'm doing. So that's it can through sweat. All different yeah. ways. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Mm. Yeah, sometimes yeah, people pass out. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Wow. And burping, you said. What about laughing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Tears, crying. Crying. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Crying. Mm. They get free, free. So, all kinds of different ways. So, everybody's different. Like I said, you know, so, you know, be adaptable. Be ready for anything. Don't think you know, don't accuse the person. Uh, don't tell the person. I'm sorry. Don't tell the person they're free unless they're really free. Okay. Don't lie right. to them. Don't say you're free. You're free. You know, I see all these show on YouTube. Come out. Oh, you're free. And the guy's still shaking in the floor. Going like this. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. That's not true deliverance. Okay. That's just a show. All right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you got to make sure the person's totally free. You challenge the demon over and over again. Until he disappears completely. All right. Mm. And and the uh, torment of the person stops. That's how you truly know the person got delivered. You know, the person now has job offer. They, uh, you know, their health is returning back to normal. That type of thing. All right. Now, now all health issues are demonic. Okay. I have people come. Can you pray for me? Because I have this thing going on with me. And, you know, I, I need uh, prayers. Okay. How long have you been in the wheelchair? Okay, I've been in the way. I always say I'm not Jesus, so I'm not able to heal people like that, you know. But I've seen people who are totally twisted in a wheelchair asking for for deliverance prayers to get healed, and and I, I'm realistic with them. And I, I mean, Jason went with me uh, about a year ago. We had somebody who was very very ill on a wheelchair, asked me to pray for them. I went over to 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 their home to pray for them, and you know, it's unrealistic for them to think that I'm going to be able to pray for them and and, and heal them, right? So, but we do pray for these people because it's the Lord's power. You know, the Lord's mighty. We have a grateful Lord and he might get healed. Right. But yeah. I can't, I cannot tell people. Uh, yeah. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to heal you. 
<laughs> I right. just can't do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So even in ministry, we tell people, even in ministry, deliverance ministry, we tell people, you know, that's up to the Lord Jesus Christ, whether he delivers you or not. Okay. I cannot guarantee you, right, that you're going to get delivered because I, I haven't prayed for you yet. I don't know what's going on with you. But I tell you right away, if I start praying for you and I see strongholds and false beliefs and, and, and things like that. I tell you, you're probably not going to be delivered because of your false beliefs. Go ahead, Stephanie. Because you said, I remember you had mentioned something like that. I think it was last week that um, it just might not be time. Yeah, it might not be time. That's correct. That's correct also. Yeah. So the time might not, they, they might not be ready. Yes. They might not be ready. So mm -hmm. this is why we continue. We have counseling as well. We have uh, Reverend Anthony does that. He does counseling with people and to break their strongholds, their false beliefs. Mm -hmm. So if we, if you're able to do that, then the person could get delivered. Because a lot of times, like, I, you know, I had, I had a lady that's impossible. It was impossible to help. I tried the best I could, and I'll give you an example. I'm not. I, I don't know everything, right? So. I had a lady that you you said no you didn't uh you didn't the holy spirit didn't leave you you believe the the gospel right and she's like she's like uh, yes i do i believe the gospel so so you know you're saved right and yes i'm saved and then two minutes later i blaspheme the holy spirit i bless <laughs> over and over again so i have to go through again and say no you didn't blaspheme the holy spirit you know you believe in the lord jesus christ this is going on and then she's like, oh yeah 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 And then two minutes later, I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. This is what you're dealing with. Wow. Mm. All right. No matter what I said, I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Mm. So that type of person is going to take longer. Mm -hmm. right? All right. So mm -hmm. sometimes they just give up. They say, there's no hope for me. Mm -hmm. right? And they stop seeing you. Right. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have somebody, if you, I'm sorry, Reverend Stacey. No, go ahead. If you have somebody you know you can't help, don't try to be a superhero. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Don't be prideful here. Right. Send them to somebody else that could help them. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Stacy. And I was just gonna say when we finish up, we always ask for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit to fill the person, and we place any remaining demons that might be hiding in torment, in permanent, continuous torment until they leave the person. So if the person needs a follow-up, the next mm -hmm. time we see them. Uh, we don't even have to go through hardly anything. They manifest like that and the demons are ready to go because they've been in torment. Mm -hmm. okay. We had one lady that had a witch uh, that was inside of her and the witch was very powerful. I mean, I'm not giving them any credit, but the witch was, she was strong. It was a lot of blood sacrifice done. Mm -hmm. And so that witch had a stronghold and she would not leave. So uh, we did the Elijah challenge. We had the witch put her hand up and we set the hand on fire with Holy Ghost fire and the witch couldn't put it out just to show them her power is not that strong. So we wrapped up the deliverance, sent them away in torment. When the lady came back a week, what was it, a week later, rather, or two yeah. weeks? It was a, a, a week or two? Week later. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a week later, the witch was ready to go because she had been burning the whole time, so. Wow, wow. Yeah, wow. That's, mm. yeah. changed her mind. She wasn't comfortable, she, wasn't calm. she was ready to go. She wasn't comfortable, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so our ministry, our ministry has been like really, really busy to the point now that we're at the end of the last week of the, the month of May already. So schedule all the way back to the end of the, the month. So, um, you know, we, we need warriors. We need people who, who want to learn, who want to, to help other people because we're in desperate. I mean, we're, we're to the point now that we have to make a, a judgments to our ministry because it's just too much. It's yeah. just too much. Wow. All right. So, um, you know, we're, I'm, I'm getting worn out. I, I've been doing this for eight plus years. Okay. And for me to tell you that I'm getting worn out, <laughs> not, in, not in the sense that I'm, you know, that it's, it's, a, it's, um, overpowering me, but I, I'm getting burned out to the point that we have to, we have to take a break here because it, you know, we're tired. All mm -hmm. right. So, yeah. So things are, we're going to have to make a judgment. That's how it is. But, you know, we still we ha we have various teams of ministers that uh, that are helping people. And so, you know, um, you know, um, we're, the teams are very effective. They, they've been taught by me. So I know they're very effective and they're trusting people. So anybody who's watching this uh, video, you know, we have.
team members here who are very capable and they're willing to help you. Okay. All right. Any other questions? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Ingrid. Um, and you, you had said quite a few times before that some deliverances happen over time. So it doesn't always happen in like one session. So when you're dealing with um, a second or a third or any kind of a follow-up, all the curses that were broken, all the sins that were already confessed, do you have to repeat that at the follow-up or oh. those things are broken? So those curses are done. That's it. Uh -huh. done with it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, all follow-ups will, will be the initial prayer that we say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you died on the cross for my sins, rose again from the dead. All right. That prayer is what we do. And then we do the witchcraft protection prayer and then we do confrontation right away. Mm, okay. Because those things have been broken already. So there's no reason why uh, we have to go through the whole process again. Except for if the person get tangled back up into something they ain't got no business That's doing. That's right. Yeah, if the person have committed some new sin, then they have to break that. Okay, okay. make a true and sincere commitment to turn away from that sin. Go ahead, just Stephanie, you have a question? Just that sin. You don't have to go back. You're just breaking whatever they got tangled up in at that time. That's right. Everything else is taken care of. That's correct. Okay. 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 Any other question? Uh, if you have a private question, you can stay after the, the meeting here. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you next Tuesday at 9 p.m. And uh, let's go ahead and have a closing prayer. Reverend uh, Pastor Jim, do you want to close in prayer? Unmute. There we go. <laughs> Father God, we just thank you for uh, Pastor Miguel, Pastor Stacy, Pastor Anthony, and Pastor Hutchinson and that team. Lord, we just thank you for God blessing all of us with uh, additional training and uh, continued uh, techniques that we can use to help others so that we can carry out your, your uh, mission statement to... Uh, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, raise the dead, preach the gospel in every nation, and make disciples of all nations. Lord, we just thank you for uh, giving us the abilities and the sense and gifts to be able to do these things for your kingdom. And we uh, thank you that, uh, God, you give us discernment and wisdom uh, in order to decide what we should do and how we should do it. So we just give you all the glory, all the honor and all the praise in Jesus most wonderful and mighty name. Amen. 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 So Amen. thank you, uh, Pastor Jim and Amen. Reverend um, Stacy. <laughs> it's Reverend Hutchison. Yes, <laughs> you did it again. I did it again. I know. <laughs> but anyway, so what, what I want to say is, um, Thank you guys for joining. And like I said, we'll see you at 9 p.m. next week and we'll continue with the training. If you have to stay afterwards because you have a question, go ahead and stay. I believe Renee has to stay over. Um, anybody else has any other questions before we go? If, otherwise, you could go ahead and leave. Thank you so much and God bless you guys. God bless you too. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Don't forget the recording, bro. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs>